Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about objects that can manage other resources. And in this video, we'll look at an example of an object that will manage an array. We'll create an array using our object. We'll process that array in a couple of different ways. And we'll see that there really isn't a whole lot to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've got my class demo here. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an array reference and I'm gonna make it private because nobody outside the class has any business accessing it directly. And we'll just use an array of integers for this example. So I've got my data type with that square brackets there and I'll just call this reference nums. So this is just gonna create a reference that can refer to an array, but if I want to actually create the array, then there's a couple of different ways that I can do it here, right? So I can create it just like this. So if I knew that I wanted to have an array of 10 integers, then this would do that. But I'm not a fan of that approach, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to create my array and size it by using a couple of constructors. So we'll have a default constructor here, and that's going to have to be public. And it's going to have to be named demo because that's the name of the class. What I'll do here is I'll just say nums is set to new int and we'll assume that default of 10 elements. Okay. So when the class gets instantiated by default, 10 integer array. But I also want to give us the option of initializing our object with the size, right? And so that way we have a little bit more flexibility. So I'll create a constructor, an overloaded constructor that accepts an argument, the size of the array, and then allow me to do this, do int and then s. And so that will let me create an array based on the needs at the time when I instantiate the class. So if I want to be super safe, what I can do, since there's no such thing as a negative sized array, I could put in a little input validation code here. So I could do something like, you know, if S is greater than zero. So that way the array will only ever get created if that is bigger than zero, if that argument is greater than zero. And if they give me a bad number, well, then maybe I'll just default to that size 10. So if they try to do anything other than, you know, a positive number, if they try to do a negative number or a zero for the array size, which isn't, which isn't valid, then they're going to get a 10 element array no matter what. Okay. So that sets up my constructors. Now I'm going to want to be able to access the individual elements of my array. And I'm going to want to be able to set the values of the individual elements of my array. So I'm going to put a couple of setters and getters in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll have a public void and we'll say, uh, set at, and then I'll need two parameters here. One's going to be for the index of my array. So we'll call that I, and then the other is going to be the value I actually want to store in my array, and we'll call that N. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, nums of I is set to N. Now that could leave us a little vulnerable based off of what we pass for our I here, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Going to need a getter here, so we're going to do public int get at, and then we'll use i for the subscript, for the index of the element we want to retrieve. And then we'll just simply return nums of i. And then maybe I want to be able to calculate the sum of all of the values stored in my array. So maybe I'll have something like um, total or something like that. So I'll do public int get total. And this is purely a getter. Don't need any arguments. So I'll create a little variable here, an accumulator, initialize that to zero, and then I'll just traverse my array, adding to the total as we go. So we'll use an enhanced for loop here, and I'll do int n nums. Then we're just going to do total plus equals n. That'll get all of the elements of my array, no matter how big the array is. Notice I use this enhanced loop, so that way I didn't have to you know, worry about if the user created an array that was 10 elements long, 15 elements long, 20 elements long. It doesn't matter. This is always going to work. Um, I could have used a traditional for loop too and just asked the array how big it was, but I think this is I think this is cleaner and neater. So we'll return that total. I think I'll add one more getter here, and it's going to be a getter that's going to return the size of the array that the object is storing so we'll just do something like get length and we'll return nums dot length okay so let's go ahead and test what we got so far so i will create demo d equals new demo now if i do that that's gonna cause my object to invoke its default constructor so this guy right here will get invoked and so that will create 
an array of 10 integers, which will be assigned to that nums reference right there. And then I can go and access and use all of the different methods that are in my public interface for my class. So for example, I can ask it how long the array is that it's managing. So I could do something like system out print line array length, and I could do d dot get uh, length. Okay. And then we'll test that. And then we'll put some numbers in that array and find their total. Okay, so there's the array length right there, 10, beautiful. Now let's use a for loop here, for int i equals zero. And then we'll say, so long as i is less than the length of the array that the demo object is managing. We're gonna do some stuff. So we'll do d dot that at i, the square of i. So when i is zero, that zero will be passed into our set at, and then zero times zero is zero. So that will be passed into our n here. And so then nums of zero will be set to zero. When i gets incremented to one, then one will be passed here, and then one squared will be passed here. So then we go up to our set at, so nums of one will be set to one, and so on. So we'll do that, and then we'll print out the contents of our array that our demo object is managing. So we'll just do something like print i equals zero, i less than d dot get length, i plus plus, and then we'll just print that stuff out. So we'll do something like this. System dot out dot print line, and we'll have to do d dot get at, and then we'll pass it i. And I think I'll put that all on the same line just to make it a little bit nicer with a space in between. All right, so let's check that out. So you can see there are all of the numbers, right? So we should have 10 numbers here, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 4, 9, 64, and 81. So that's how that works. Now let's see the total. We'll invoke that method, system.out.println, total of array, and we're gonna do d.get total. Let me scroll that up so you can see it, and let's test that. I'll invoke our accessor right here, which is gonna traverse each element of the array, total that up, and then return it. So let's see that work. And uh, there you go, here's the total of the array right there, 285. All right, so let's finish off by talking about, you know, the danger here, right? So the set at. So what happens if I try to assign a value to an element of the array that doesn't exist? So I might do something like this. I might do d.set at element 20, you know, the 21st element of a 10 element array, I don't know, 99, okay? The compiler is not gonna prevent me from doing that. This is gonna try to go to index 20, but our only valid indexes are zero through nine because we instantiated this using the default constructor, which gave us only 10 elements, right? So what's gonna happen when I compile this? We're gonna see a particular error here. Everything's gonna barf all over us. So what is the problem? We've got an exception, and that exception is an array index out of bounds exception. So arrays in Java have got index checking. It says here, index 20 is out of bounds for length 10. It just means that we picked an index that's not valid. The only valid indexes are zero through nine, and we picked 20. So Java figured that out and said, nope, we're done, you're, you're out of here. So we have a couple of ways that we can deal with that. So one way to deal with it is similar to what we did in our destructor here. So we could just say something like, if i is greater than or equal to zero, and i is less than nums.length. If we do that, then this statement will only execute if we provide a valid index as a argument. So if I compile and run this now, you know, nothing vomits because that statement never actually uh, executed. So that is one way we can deal with it. So another way we could deal with this is by using a try catch block. We could throw some exception handling in here. So I can start a try block here, have my code that is going to execute that could throw an exception inside that try block. And if we do that again, if we pass an invalid index here, well then this will raise the exception and then the logic will get thrown down to our catch block here. Now I have to specify what type of exception we're gonna try to catch here. So what type of exception was it? If you can't remember, like I can never remember anything. Well then let's just go throw an exception on purpose and then that will tell us, we can just copy and paste it and that'll tell us what type of exception we need. That's what we'll copy into our, into our catch block. So 
just go down here and do system.out.println.md.get at negative at you know, negative five, something like that. It's not a valid index. So when we run this, we're gonna throw our exception again. Blech. So what was the exception? It's this guy right here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that into my try catch block when she's that. Copy and paste, copy and paste. So right there. And then we'll uncover the stuff. And then in here, I need to have something and I have to have a name for my exception. So I'm just gonna throw that in there. And um, I'll just return, oh, negative one. I'll do that. I have to return something, so we'll return negative one. So if this is an invalid index, that's what's gonna get returned. So now if we do this and run it again, you'll see we don't crash and negative one is what was printed out. And you'll see that since we have this overloaded constructor here, we can go down and simply place an argument in here. Let's make it say 30. And so now when we run this, since I used the, the get length methods and I've got my get out in a, and I wrote my loop here to where it doesn't matter how long the array is. I've got my code in here to protect this, no matter how long the array is, we're going to see that it's going to work just the same without any problems, except now we've got all of our numbers here, right? So we've got you know 30 numbers that got generated and See, our total went way the heck up. So it's a nice way of coding it because this is code that is written in a generic way to where it doesn't matter how long that array is, my methods are always going to work, right? So by using this enhanced for loop, by using the length method of the array, by using some code for testing here, I've protected myself and I can use my class in different ways my object can manage arrays of all kinds of different lengths in a, in a mostly safe. Okay, everyone, that's everything I have for you for this video. As usual, if you're a student of mine, you have any questions about the content of this video or any other videos in our courses, feel free to email me via Canvas or stop by our online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.